Hi, it's Wayne here from Adreno Brisbane. This is a freediving video. I'm going to talk about freediving pool discipline. We know freediving definitely for the, you know, the uh, competition depth diving. And this is really where freediving began. The pool disciplines were considered kind of like just training for the depth. That's for a long period of time. Even back, uh, you know, 10 years or so, the, uh, they did have pool competitions, but even the, the, the freedivers were kind of like, you know, oh yeah, it's just pool. However, this has changed. We definitely have some very uh, strong pool competitions, and we have athletes who are doing fantastic. We've already had world records over 300 meters at the making of this video around now, this time. So uh, pool is a very major part. I won't say it's a bigger part by no means, but it's a very major part of uh, freediving discipline. So we're just going to have a look at the the, uh, the various freediving disciplines. The first one is probably the simplest, and the simplest discipline of them all is static apnea. Static, defined as still or not moving. Apnea, holding breath. So static apnea is the discipline where you are face down in the water holding your breath. In the competition, this means you are timed from the moment your airways enter to the moment they come out by stopwatch. This discipline is marked on your time. You will have to do a um, surface protocol when you come up just to show the judges that you have not gone too far, that you're still lucid and, and uh, bright. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. However, this by some freedivers is thought of as one of the most difficult. And the reason being is that there's nothing to take your mind off the actual pain and discomfort you're going through by just holding your breath. In static apnea, you learn to confront the pain and the discomfort of the urge to breathe. Because there's nothing between you and that discomfort, you get to have a good look at it. And you learn to confront it. You learn to face it. And, uh, you know, to give you a bit of an idea, because a person uh, has the urge to breathe doesn't mean he's low on oxygen. And for example, I get my first urge to breathe in one of my disciplines at a certain time, a certain distance, and I'll double that distance before I'm actually near needing, because of low oxygen, to, uh, to come up. And quite a few divers have a similar statistics. At certain points, the diver will be tapped, and that tap will signal the diver to give a sign that he's okay. The sign doesn't have to be the okay on this. The guy's face is in the water. It could be a, a flick of the finger like so. It, 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 as long as it's predetermined that we know the diver can hear and understand what we're saying. The second discipline is dynamic apnea. Dynamic, you know, to do with the dynamics of moving or whatever. Uh, dynamic apnea, while you're holding your breath, you're swimming a distance in the pool. And in dynamic apnea, it's with fins or with a monofin. This is uh, probably a, a bit more interesting discipline than static apnea because you've got something to keep your attention going on while you're holding your breath. Uh, as in static, in a competition situation, you get a countdown. And a countdown, a countdown from two minutes when you're in the lane, and then at uh, they'll call it official top, and that's the time that you've been given to start your event, and then you move off on your event. It doesn't. You've got ten seconds in the pool to move away after official top, so you could hit official top and still have time to take a full breath and then move off. As in all freediving disciplines, there are penalties if you don't quite do things right. You've got penalties, say you don't make a distance that you said you're going to make, or penalty, that's in the pool, or penalties on failing to touch a wall. Um, but there are also things like disqualification from, of course, service protocol or, or um, some such things like that, uh, blackouts or sambas. Okay, and then the final discipline is dynamic no fins. This is dynamic, ap dynamic apnea, which is distance in a pool, done, but with no fins. Freediving has a very particular 
stroke. Very similar to the breaststroke. The breaststroke kick is very uh, is part of it, and your hand movements are similar, but not exactly the same as the breaststroke in um, in competition swimming. Uh, and you're depending very much on your ability to glide and be streamlined, as well as your breath holding ability. They all the two dynamic apnea and and uh, dynamic no fins really going to get a long way if you work out a very streamlined position in the water. Because every, every meter that you get that is not being worked for with energy is kind of like a bonus. You know, It's no good going through the water with your head up looking at the end of the pool all the time when that's slowing you down and you're going to get you know, 10, 20 meters less because of your, you're going through the water like a bulldozer. You know, so you, you learn the ways to, to streamline and uh, streamlining is, is uh, you know, very, very smart thinking to get your streamlining and your technique down very well. It's not all breath hold, you know. Some people say that the, the most curious freediving event is your no fins constant weight. Constant weight no fins going down with no fins because it's completely the human against the barrier of water, you know, to... Uh, without any assistance, you know. Or perhaps in the pool that can be said the same as no fins. You are just, uh, no paddles, nothing but you, your hands and what you can do. And that's the, the beauty of it, you know. There is no doubt about it. So three disciplines make up a, uh, the pool disciplines, okay. And most competitions involve all three of them. For some people, Freediving is all about the numbers, how far you can go and how long your breath hold is and things like that. But I take it a step further in the way I look at it. And I think it takes huge mental fortitude to uh, achieve the uh, results that freedivers get. And, you know, it's not for me number of metres, it's the fact that the person can take control of all the barriers, including the urge to breathe, and can move through them. I've been around for a while doing this sport and uh, the benefits are great and I can only recommend them to you. Cheers, Wayne from Brisbane.